Today we're taking a look at last year's flagship phone from Samsung, the S22 Ultra. With the arrival of the S23 Ultra in 2023, resellers and Samsung itself are probably going to be trying to get rid of the S22 Ultra stock. So you might be wondering, is it worth it to still buy an S22 Ultra in 2023? The answer is maybe, it kind of depends. If you can score a decent deal on the S22 Ultra and get some kind of trade credit for your old phone, the S22 Ultra could be an awesome upgrade. The S22 Ultra still has years left of software support, so it's definitely still worth taking a look at. Before I got my S22 Ultra, I had a Samsung S9. Between launch promos and trading in my S9, I really felt like I got a pretty good value on my S22 Ultra. As for the S22 Ultra specs, the storage came in 128GB, 256GB, 512GB, and 1TB. Even though the 128GB version did come in the Ultra variant, Samsung chose to only give it 8GB of system memory, versus 12GB on the rest of the Ultras. Even though this is a little bit lower, there is a feature to enable virtual RAM or using the storage. I haven't personally had to use this on a 128GB version, even while gaming, but it is an option. All of the Ultra variants came with the stylus, long live the Note, the processor was a pretty big topic as well. Samsung switched to the new Snapdragon 8 Gen 1 CPU. This processor at the time was incredibly fast, being an 8-core processor made up of one 3 gigahertz Cortex-X2, 2.5 gigahertz Cortex-A710s, and four cores at 1.8 gigahertz using the Cortex-A510. This made for top tier gaming and computing performance. I personally have never had such a smooth performing phone like the S22. With great power comes great responsibility. Uncle Ben would have warned you about battery life. The screen brightness on the S22 can be a huge factor in the so-so real world battery performance that some users were reporting. In my testing, I also saw increased screen brightness really drain the battery. At first, it was tough to manage the battery life on this phone, even though it came with a 5000 milliamp hour battery. If you like the auto brightness, keep it, but I personally keep my S22 Ultra at 30% brightness all the time. I find that to be more than enough. In terms of my strategy for battery life, I definitely make sure I manage my apps correctly, what's running in the background, and I keep the screen brightness right around 30%. In addition to that, I prevent the phone from charging over 85%, and I don't ever let the phone overheat because that will degrade your battery. Now, after about a year of usage, my battery can still last pretty much all day with normal use. On busier days, I do have to charge the phone twice, but I do use this phone as my main phone. I use it in my day job, and I do use it for recording these videos. Overall, I'm pretty happy with how the battery life worked out, but it's definitely something to keep in mind when you buy a top tier performing phone. The S22 Ultra's main camera is awesome. I use it to film all of my videos, like I said. The quality has been great. There's a lot of configurable options, and I found the 4K 30 quality to be very good and a decent file size without needing to enable HVAC. So how does last year's flagship stack up? Well, the S23 Ultra is coming to us with a similarly specced screen, though a little bit upgraded. The base model for the S23 Ultra is coming with a 256 gigabyte storage with eight gigabytes of system memory versus the 128 and eight on the S22 Ultra. The processor is the newer Snapdragon 8 Gen 2, featuring eight total cores, one core using a 3.36 gigahertz Cortex-X3, two cores at 2.8 gigahertz using a Cortex-A7 15, two cores at 2.8 gigahertz using the Cortex A710, and three cores at 2 gigahertz using Cortex A510s. This should provide a decent bump in performance for the overall system, as well as the performance per watt figure. The S23 Ultra is also getting the Arduino 740 versus the 730 found in the S22 Ultra. This should help with gaming a bit. The main camera in the S23 Ultra is the new 200 megapixel camera. Quality uplift should be pretty significant. I'll be comparing pictures and video in 1080, 4K, and 8K later on. So which one of these Samsung flagship phones should you buy? If you have an older S20 or S21 and it's in pretty good shape, you can probably wait for an upgrade. You might be able to make it until the S24. That is, of course, unless you need the latest and the greatest. 
it'll be hard to beat the S23 Ultra. The newer S23 Ultra is definitely going to be faster than the S22, but the value might not be there if you have an S22 or if you have an S21. It's not going to be too huge of a leap. If you're on an older phone though, something like the S20, the S10, or maybe even something below that, or you're trying to switch from another Android phone or an iPhone to a Samsung phone, you probably are looking at a pretty good storage upgrade, better battery life, a much better screen, and a camera upgrade. 